What's up you guys, I'm Dan, this is Frugal Not Cheap, and today we'll talk about why I still have zero in crypto. So I've done a few videos about crypto or cryptocurrencies in the past, but the recent collapse of FTX, a cryptocurrency exchange, makes it a good time for us to talk about this topic. If you're not very familiar with cryptocurrencies and how they work, I suggest taking a look at my Bitcoin video. This will give you kind of the basics about Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies in general, and it goes into quite a bit of depth. Some of the main points that I make in that video are that proof of work systems like Bitcoin have a real scalability problem, something that re Ethereum has recently addressed as I understand it. Also a huge efficiency problem there in terms of uh, energy and compute. Then I point out that a lot of the features that we would uh, like to have in terms of a currency uh, either don't exist in Bitcoin or already exist in the current banking system. Sure, we could uh, stand to reduce uh, a lot of fees and, and costs within the system and uh, also improve upon it, uh, but it is really already digital. But perhaps the biggest point out of that video is the question, where does value come from? And so we take a deep dive into it, but um, at the end of the day, uh, Bitcoin really is only worth what people are willing to buy and sell it for. And it has no intrinsic value, nothing that uh, gives it a value on its own just sitting there. And so that's why I shy away from crypto assets. There was, however, I thought some hope for cryptocurrencies to really become uh, usable and mainstream, and that was Facebook's effort to launch the Libra, later called the DM cryptocurrency. So where was the value going to come from here? Well, that's because these were going to be tied to a basket of real currencies that are actually in use around the world to buy and sell goods and services. Unfortunately, regulars were really not keen on this idea, especially because of the uh, massive possible adoption given Facebook, WhatsApp, Instagram, etc. is a gigantic user base, and so this never came to fruition. Since that time, I've continued to look out and see if there's anything interesting developing in the crypto space, something that I believe actually could be usable for us on a daily basis, and so far I haven't seen anything, although I do have hopes to see um, what uh, Elon Musk has planned for the new Twitter. He has talked about how he will kind of uh, implement his old plan for x.com with Twitter. So we'll see what that's going to look like. I'm not sure. So in this landscape where I really just don't see that there's anything good out there, why is there so much money in crypto? Why are all these people investing in crypto? And I put that in quotes because I really do think that uh, it's not investing. Here we are really just speculating. And so what I think is people just uh, like to gamble. <laughs> people like to make money. And there's a kind of a mania, a sort of... um. You know, Keynes talked about the animal spirits. Really, I think it really is just sort of this, um, it's a popular thing to try to make money off of right now. Not everyone really understands markets or economy or finance all that well. And it's been really made easy for, for people to get involved in this uh, that don't have that kind of sophistication. And um, yeah, it's really, really all kind of unfortunate. So there's a huge amount of fraud in the space, just a terrible amount of fraud. There's really no consumer protections, it's unregulated. So lots of people are losing money. And yes, during the mania, when it looked like there, you know, when there was a giant bubble and everyone was making tons of money, things looked really good. Uh, but the line doesn't always go up. So one of the big uh, crashes that I covered in a video a little while back was Terra Luna. Others have done a much better job of kind of doing all the details, but I wanted to give my own spin on it. So this cryptocurrency, essentially Ponzi scheme that only worked when things were going up, uh, did crash. Lots of people lost money. And uh, consequently, a, a hedge fund, sort of, called Three Arrows Capital. They were a good currency hedge fund, then they got into crypto, and this became their downfall. Um, they were heavily... Uh, connected to Terra Luna and that became their downfall as well. And then that led to the downfall of uh, Celsius Network where a personal friend of mine lost some money and then also to Voyager Digital. So there was this real kind of contagion going on in the crypto market and along with uh, all of these failures then there was also a loss of confidence and so overall a very large decline in the total cryptocurrency market capitalization as well. And the fallout continues. Because actually the downfall of FTX and its connected hedge fund 
or whatever, uh, Alameda Research, uh, is also still connected to Terra Luna. Well, let's talk about what Alameda Research and FTX are and uh, what happened. So FTX is a Bahamas-based cryptocurrency exchange that was started in 2019 by a bunch of teenagers. And if that doesn't sound sketchy to you, I don't know. <laughs> anyway, so the, the guy that uh, started it was this guy, uh, Sam Bankman-Fried, and of course he had a co-founder, um, I mean, a, a partner who also was an investor, and then they got other investors along the way. Uh, at some point, they were able to raise something like, I don't know, $400 million at a crazy valuation. Uh, crazy stuff. I don't know how this stuff happens. Especially because CoffeeZilla has a great clip where uh, Sam Bankman-Fried is essentially telling someone that it's a... Uh, about a Ponzi scheme saying that there's really you know no actual economic value created and yet <laughs> the valuations are going up and you get more people involved I, I think of myself as like a fairly cynical person and yep that was so <laughs> much more cynical yeah, than this, I, how I would have described farming like you're just like well I'm in the Ponzi business and it's pretty At good no point have, and did any of this require any sort of like economic case it's just like other people right. put money in the box, and so I'm going to too, and then it's more valuable, so I'm going to put more money in. And at no point in the cycle did it seem to like describe any sort of like economic purpose. Uh, yeah, yeah, pretty, pretty bad. Pretty bad. So this guy, you know, not not super trustworthy, and uh, turns out there's, you know, that that turns out to be an accurate view. But at their peak, this uh, FTX crypto exchange was the third largest cryptocurrency exchange. It had over a million users, and as of January of this year, 2022, the firm was valued at 32 billion dollars. And then they were very closely connected with Alameda Research, this fund, which actually turns out that Sam bankman fields girlfriend was the, <laughs> the CEO of that one. So that's not a good look. Anyway, so the whole thing goes, goes bust, right? Uh, they end up filing for bankruptcy. They got this guy, John Ray III, to kind of come up and uh, come in and clean the mess. And he actually has some experience in these matters because uh, he oversaw the liquidation of Enron. <laughs> so um, if you don't know about Enron, uh, they were in the energy space and they also uh, cooked the books quite a lot. And uh, they, they did some pretty shady things like uh, manipulate the markets and get money from California. Hey, John. He did. The regulatory is all in a big concern about is we're wheeling power out of California. He just steals money from California to the tune of a million. Can we rephrase that? Okay. He arbitrages the California market to the tune of a million bucks or two a day. <laughs> um, um, smartest guys in the room, so like a movie to watch to, to learn more about that. Very interesting case. In any event, John Ray III certainly has experience uh, overseeing uh, this kind of a situation. And he came in and he said in the court filing that he's never seen such a complete failure of corporate controls and a complete lack of trustworthy financial data. In other words, they were just doing whatever and they weren't keeping track of anything very well. And we just, yeah, it's just a, a complete, uh, complete utter mess, uh, which you might imagine for a Bahamas based 2019 founded uh, cryptocurrency exchange created by a bunch of teenagers. <laughs> There are some fishy things, by the way, where it looks like about $10 billion was moved from FTX to his girlfriend's Alameda Research, uh, of which at least $1 to $2 billion has uh, since gone missing. So we've got somewhere around maybe $1.7 billion of customer funds that have gone poof. And in other words, they're in a cryptocurrency wallet somewhere. And yeah, pretty sketchy. As would the issues with Tether and uh, Voyager and Celsius, etc, etc. Uh, there has been some, you know, further contagion. In other words, uh, more specifically, there's been a erosion in confidence in the crypto markets as well. And between November 1st and November the 17th, approximately $180 billion in market valuation was wiped out from the crypto market. And that's no surprise. Again, Terra Luna was about $60 billion lost there. Three Arrows Capital was about another $10 billion. Celsius was smaller at 5 billion but 4.7 billions of dollar 4.7 billion dollars of that was in user money and here in FTX we have at least one point we have approximately 1.7 billion dollars of customer money oh and then we had Voyager as well another 6 billion so yeah hopefully uh, you can see based on this history uh, that probably regulation is required in this space people are just getting hurt too much and there's just way too much fraud and deception not a good place to be even if there might be you know a few projects here and there that uh, are sound in in ways that all these fraudulent schemes are not 
But then at the end of the day still, I look across the landscape and I say, where's the value? So as it stands today, I'm still not seeing anything good in the crypto space. I'm not going to be putting any money into it at all uh, because all of these coins are really only worth whatever the next sucker that comes along is willing to pay. So hope you liked today's video. If you did, please hit the like button and consider subscribing. Thank you very much for watching and I will see you in the next video.